Hi, this is Christy Strickler for GetItScrap.com. Today we're going to be talking about how you can keep the grid design fresh on scrapbook pages by using the grids within the design. Using a grid structure for organizing your photos, title, journaling, and embellishments is a great way to organize all of the elements on a page. The grid is a classic design that never goes out of style. Let's see how our creative team keeps the design fresh and functional. Our first scrapbook layout is by Debbie Hodge. She made Initially Awkward with a template by Allie Edwards. A band of three photos is accented with a small 3x3 three three grid of squares that holds embellishments and journaling. It's a charming area of the page and the underlying grid makes it possible to include these extras without creating chaos on the page. Grids are known for keeping a page clean and simple. This is a digital scrapbook layout, but I also want to point out that if you're making it in paper form, this is one of those layouts that's perfect for using up scraps of paper from your stash. I'm grid challenged personally, and by that I mean that when I make a large grid, they're not always straight or clean. If you're like me, then this is a great alternative. It's a lot easier to keep smaller grids aligned and they can look less sloppy if you don't keep everything lined up straight. So try this with your scraps or if you're struggling with keeping your grids straight. This is also great to provide little houses for your scrapbook embellishments. You can see how Debbie's got a few little button pieces, some flowers, and a butterfly in some of those smaller grids. So she's embellished the page, but it still has a very clean look, even though there's a lot on this layout. This next layout is by Amy Kingsford, and we're going to point out a couple of ways in which grids keep things fresh. The first I want to draw your attention to is the title treatment. Amy Kingsford arranged one of the words in her title in a grid on my 2011 Christmas wish list. I often struggle with those circular shaped letter stickers and this demonstrates how by arranging them in a grid you can make them feel kind of even and have a place on your page. You can of course do this with other types of letter shapes and fonts as well but grids provide a structure for the title that's visually interesting. Amy's also done something else here. She says sometimes it can be fun to piece together a foundation that is made up of several approaches. On this page I've done just that using a combination of grids, shapes, bands, strips, and brushwork to piece together the inner canvas on my page. This technique works especially well with pages that don't have photos because it establishes extra visual interest that a photo would normally provide. So in effect, by using that grid, she's used it to take the place of where a photo might be. It's sort of that functional focal point for the page that draws you in and gives structure to the rest of the design. On this next layout we're going to see how pattern paper can play a part in the grid. Not a lot of patterns in and of themselves but one singular piece of paper. Look through your stash and find a piece that has a grid to support your story. Doris Sander used a pattern paper with a grid of silhouettes as major elements on her layout Precious. Doris says, sometimes I like to use large chunks of pattern paper to help tell my story. Here I found a couple pieces, the cherries and the little girl silhouette, that seemed a perfect match for this photo of my niece that I love so much. When you think of a grid pattern, you probably are thinking of something even, like a 4x4 four four or a 3x3. Three three. But using an uneven grid can help keep things fresh and it can play a little bit better into your design. And we're going to see that on the next two scrapbook layouts. This first one is by Amy Mallory and she says, my number one go-to design is the grid. When I have a blank canvas in front of me, I think about this grid design and how I can use it over and over but still keep it fresh. On Dreams Come True, she kept it fresh by adding a 4x3 grid of circles as an embellishment block below her photo. I think this really works for her for a couple of reasons. The 4x3 grid is approximately the same size as her photo. So it's kind of like, to me, a grid within a grid. You've got a 2x2 two two grid 
or, or I guess you would say a two by one with that grid below it. I'm hoping that makes sense. The other thing that I really, really love about her design is her use of color. Here there's just so much white. And by using all one color, she can use little bits of patterns and texture to really play on that grid and provide layers, textures, and visual interest. On this layout, we're seeing a two by three grid. It's a page by Lisa Dickinson. I want to point out one difference between this layout and the one prior to it. On this one, the embellishments are layered on top of the grid. On the prior layout by Amy Mallory, we see a lot of elements that are layered underneath the grid and the photo itself. Expanding on top of or outside or around the grid itself is a wonderful way to keep things fresh and to make them visually interesting. Lisa Dickinson is masterful at working the grid in a variety of ways. On this girl, she overlaid that two by three grid of embellished circles on an oversized photo. Oversized photos are fun to play with, but you don't always know what to put with the photo, how to embellish it. If you have a lot of white space or blank space, as in the case here she has, in the background you can see a lot of grass and maybe some of the extra flowers, play around with layering a grid on top of it. You'll still be able to see that background peeking through, but you're still adding to that layer, that visual interest we were talking about. You can also use a grid of themed items to tell a photoless story. Our last layout is by Tanya Deskins, and she has added a grid of theme-related embellishments to her photoless page about summer travel. Adding grids that hold a variety of patterned papers is quick work for digital scrapbookers. And as I've mentioned before, it's great for any paper scrapbookers who want to use up a lot of scraps of paper. It's also a great way to use a lot of your supplies. If you have something that's themed that maybe you're struggling to use and you're, you're kind of hoarding it in your stash, use a bunch of it, layer it into the grids, and tell your story. There's no need to hold onto the supplies. You'll be very satisfied with the page. The page is very interesting. And you don't have to have a photo to tell the story. You've seen a lot of examples of how our creative team has kept the classic grid design fresh and functional on their scrapbook layouts. This was originally an article for Get It Scrapped and we'll link up to that for you in the notes for this video. If you're interested in additional inspiration for grids and block design, you'll want to head over to the Get It Scrapped membership. There's a whole chapter on grids and blocks for you to try out. For more inspiration, visit getitscrapped.com slash blog.